For today's In Focus, we travel to Spitalfields in the east of London. This former parish is home to Christ Church, an Anglican church built in the early 18th century. For more than 200 years, this church saw the comings and goings of daily life, and by the end of the 19th century saw Spitalfields become the most notorious criminal slum in the capital. By the 1960s, Christ Church was nearly derelict and unusable. But in 1976, a trust set about organising a restoration of this once handsome building. Amongst other things, this work would involve clearing out Christchurch's crypt. And who are you going to call? Archaeologists, of course. A team was brought in in the mid-80s. Excavations recovered close to a thousand coffins, of which approximately 390 had nameplates attached, with information inscribed such as name, age and date of death. The occupants had been born as early as 1646 and lived as late as 1852. It goes without saying that this offered a unique window into the people who lived during a formative period of London's past, a time of industrial change, of squalid living conditions and infamous crimes. It also offered the opportunity to study clothing and burial customs from a social class which many didn't bother to record. But more than this, archaeologists realised that this was a unique opportunity for an experiment. Remarkably, we had close to 400 individuals who could be independently named, aged and dated thanks to the nameplates on their coffins. Furthermore, with church records, we could tell how they lived, how they died, what illnesses they may have suffered from, and even who they were related to. This was a chance for archaeologists to do a blind test on themselves. An opportunity to take the measurements and observations which we rely upon and see how accurate our assumptions were. In other words, there were definite answers. The question was whether archaeology would find them. So, archaeologists went about their usual fare with human remains, measuring and observing. This was also an opportunity to test the science behind recently developed archaeological techniques. Many observations were made about the health and lifestyle of the subjects, but in particular, archaeologists attempted to age the skeletons. To this end, observations were made of the sutures on the cranium, how well developed was the skull, how well developed was the skeleton, how long were the bones, how worn were they from work. Did they have wisdom teeth? Had they lost teeth? were the teeth worn from a lifetime of eating. Teeth were even examined to observe changes in amino acids which may indicate age. We shall look at this technique, amino acid racemization, in a future aspect of archaeology. But the question for now is had the archaeologists' work been fruitful? What were the results of these tests, and were these results accurate? Ultimately, all of these techniques are estimations. How good were these estimations? Well, the answer is good, but not great. It seems we tended to overestimate the age of the young, and to underestimate the age of those who were older. So rather than passing with an A, archaeologists found there was still some work to do. Maybe a C instead. The crypt in Spitalfields Christchurch was a remarkable excavation. In part because it gave us an insight into a range of people from the 18th and 19th centuries, their habits, their health, and ultimately their inhumations. But also because this crypt allowed archaeologists to fine-tune their techniques, test them against known data, and come away better for it. Oh, and because it allowed a beautiful building to be restored to grandeur. So, if you're ever in the area... Perhaps on a Jack the Ripper walk, remember the invaluable contribution Christchurch Crypt made to the science behind archaeology.